Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the October 2019 International A-Level Statistics S1 paper. This question is about this uh, histogram here. And in this question, we are told that the histogram shows the times taken in seconds by each of 260 people to complete a puzzle. All right, so we have frequency density for which there's no scale given. And we've got the time taken in seconds. And they've given us a um, frequency table, and we have to complete the frequency table using the histogram given. And there's a time taken, they've given us between 50 and 30 seconds, between 30 and 45 seconds, and so on. Um, there seems to be no gaps here, so there's no problem with that. You always check with the limits given. Are there gaps? For example, if you said 15 to 29, and then from... 30 to 45 whatever if there's a gap then you have to be careful to extend the uh, you know the limits by 0.5 each way but here there's no gaps and there's no problem okay the frequencies are given except for these two we have to find these two frequencies uh, using the frequency table so basically um, now one of the ways of of doing this is to look at the frequency and look at for example the number of squares and try to uh, find out how much each one of these squares represents. Now for this, that might be a bit of a hassle because some of these are like half squares. So it might be a bit of a hassle to do it that way. We could do it that way, but I think my, what might be better is to try and work out a scale for the frequency density by using the fact that frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the interval. That's one way of doing it. So if we take the frequency, which is 20, and divided by the interval, which is 15 for this, you've got 20 over 15, okay, which uh, both of those, uh, 5 goes into them, that's 4 over 3. So the frequency density for this is 4 over 3, which is 1 and 1 third. So that up to here represents 1 and 1 third. Okay, so how do we figure out what the scale is here? So that's basically 4 over 3. So you can think of this as how many squares do we have? We have 5... We have eight squares representing four over three. Uh, so four over three squares, uh, four over eight squares represents four over three units. Okay, so we can say one square is four over three divided by eight. Okay, so one square will be represented by four over three divided by eight, which gives you um, four over three, whoops, divided by eight which gives you one sixth. So one square is basically one sixth of a unit. Okay, so um, you could say that that's, say two squares is one third then. Two sixths is one third. Yeah. One third, two thirds, three thirds. Okay, so that means every six squares is one unit. Every six squares is one unit. Every two squares is one third. Okay, so we could now use that to figure out for this. Let's just check if, if what we're saying is correct. Let's just check the frequency density for the second, um, the second uh, um, bar. So you have one four five, one four five. Sorry, divided by, that's going to be thirty to forty five, which is also fifteen, isn't it? Fifteen. That gives us twenty nine over three. Okay, twenty nine thirds. Okay, so what's twenty nine over three? Um, that gives you nine and two thirds. So that's nine and two thirds. So. That means this should represent 9 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's 9 and 2 thirds. So let's have a look. That's every 6 squares is 1. That means that's 1 after 6 squares. That's 2 after 12 squares. That's 3 after 18 squares. Then 4 is going to be after 24 squares. And then 5 is going to be after 30 squares. And then 6 is going to be after 36 squares. And 7 is going to be after 42 squares. Um, yeah. And 8 is going to be after 48 squares. And 9 is going to be after 54 squares. That's 9. And you got one third after, that's 2. And then another, yeah, so that's 9 and 2 thirds. It works out exactly correct. Okay, so that's, our scale is correct here. Okay, so we can now use that scale to work out what this frequency is. So we can say there, therefore that, um, one second, what's happened here? It's gone out of place. We can say therefore that for this um, 
one that's missing 45 to 50 that's from here this this column here we can work out the frequency density so we can go to the um, we can go along and we can see from here it's over this is the frequency density that's six and that's um, yeah that's one two three Okay, that's going to be 6.5. Yeah, because 6 squares is, is, is 1. So that's 6.5. So we can say here that the frequency is equal to frequency density times interval, which is 6.5 times the interval, which is the width, which is between, for this one, it's between 45 and 55, which is 10. So that means that's going to be 65. So we can see that there's 65 here. And if we go from the next bar, which is from 55 to 60, this one here, we're going to go up to this level over here. That's exactly three. That's exactly three. So for this one, we're going to say, for that one, we're going to have three times the interval, which is five, which is 15. So that's 65 and that's 15. And we can make sure that we're correct because we know that in total, there are 260 people, so the total frequency must be 260. So what we can do is we can add together all of these um, numbers and mo make sure that they add up to 260. So 20 plus 145 plus 65 plus 15 uh, plus 10 plus 5. Good, that's right. So that's 260. So we can be sure that we've done the right thing. So we have completed the frequency table by making a scale on the frequency density using frequency density divided by interval. Okay, um, let's see if we could have done it by counting the squares. I think counting the squares might be a bit more, more of a hassle here. But like, for example, here we've got, you know, 5 times 5, which is 25. Okay, and then here we've got 5 times, so that's 25 plus, And here you've got uh, 5 times 3, which is 15. And here you've got like, uh, that's 2.5 times 5. Okay, 2.5 times 5. Which is 12.5. So here you have 12.5. And here you've got 3 times 2.5. 3 times 2.5. Which is 7.5. So that's that's going to be uh, 20. 20 plus, that's um, 40, that's 60. So there's 60 squares in this. And that means there's 20, 60 squares. So 20, uh, frequency density of 60, 20 is shared among 60 squared. So each square is worth one third. Okay, so if you count all the squares in here, you're going to have... You know, five, that's going to be 25, that's 5 times 5, 25. So you can say that's going to be, let's see, that's 5 times 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 55, 58. 58 times, that's 5, 6, 7 and a half. Okay, so that's 58 times 7 and a half. So you have 58 58 times 7.5. That's the number of squares you have all together here. 435. And if you divide that by 3, you get 145. Yeah, so that works out. So basically, if you count the number of squares, okay, like for example here, you have, uh, you know, you can count that there. there's basically, that's 2.5 plus 2.5, that's 5. 5 times you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 39. So you have 39 times 5. Okay, and you divide that by 3. That gives you 65. So that's another way of doing it. Okay, you can count the number of squares. So we could have done that actually a bit easier here. We can count the number of squares because each, find out how much does each one square represent. So each one of these little squares, how much does it represent? So we could have done this by doing that. That's 5 times 2.5. That's 7.5. 7.5 that way. And this way, you have 5 plus, that's 3, that's 8. So 8 times 7.5. 
Okay, that's 60 squares. So 20 units represented by 60 squares. E each square is worth one third. Okay, so that's a, an alternative way of working out the frequencies rather than finding the frequency densities, whichever you find easier. Okay, so you can do it in, in both ways. Perfectly fine. All right, and then it says, given that the sum of F times T equals 11,875.5 and the sum of F T squared equals 505,718.75, find an estimate for the mean time taken to complete the, the puzzle. Now, they gave us information that's very useful for us to do this. We don't have to do frequency times mid interval plus this times mid interval plus. You don't have to do all of that. It's all done for you. This means... When you've multiplied these two together in each of these columns, and then you've added those sums, that's what you're going to get. So it's very easy for us to find the mean straight away. The mean is going to be the sum of FT divided by the number of entries. So it's going to be 11,807.5 divided by 260. Remember, the number of entries is 260, as we said. So that will give us our mean. So we have 11,000, 11,875.5 over 260. And that gives us 426.444, 426.444. We can say 420, hold on, there's something wrong with that. What did I do wrong here? Ah, what have I done wrong here? Okay, that's a good little lesson for you. There's no way the answer can be 426 because our times are between these values. They're gonna be somewhere, you know, in these values here, they can't be 426. So I knew that there's something wrong. As soon as I saw 426, I knew there's something wrong. So that's a little, little lesson for you in case you make a silly mistake like I did. I wrote everything down correctly, but I put an extra seven. I wrote this, something like that. So that's a very easy mistake to make on your calculator. So always have your common sense about you as well. Don't just write down what your calculator says without thinking. If I write down 426 as the, um, the mean time, well, that doesn't make any sense because the, time, the, the maximum times are between 75 and 90. Right? So it has to be within this range, of course. So when I correct that, I get four, four, 42.644. 4, that's much better. So you get 42.644. So that means the answer is going to be uh, 42.6 seconds to 3 SF. So that's the mean time. So that's part one. Now for part two, we've got to find the standard deviation. Now we know the standard deviation is given by the square root of the variance. And the variance is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, so the, the standard deviation is the square root of that. So the mean of the squares is when you do um, the time, which is this 22.5 squared times the frequency, and 37.5 squared times the frequency, and so on. You add them all together, which is already, again, done for us. This is the sum of the squares of all the items. We've got to find the mean of the squares by dividing that by 260, and that's that mean of the squares part done. So we've got 5... 105,718.75 divided by 260 minus the square of the mean. So we've got to take the square of the mean, which is the square of this. So I'll leave it in this form. 11,807.5 over 260. All right, I've got to do that. That will give me the, the standard deviation. So let's see without making any silly mistakes here. I'll leave that as my answer. So I've got the square root of, I've got um, fraction 505,718.75 over 260 minus the answer that I got last squared. Okay, and that should give us 11.249, which is 11.2, so that's the standard deviation, 11.2 seconds, that's the standard deviation, and that's the mean. Okay, so there's part one and part two done of B. Now we're going to go on to part C. 
It says, use linear interpolation to estimate the median time taken to complete the puzzle. Let's just fill in these values now. We got 65 and 15. Okay, that's 65 here and that's 15. Okay, we found those already. So use linear interpolation to estimate the median time taken to complete this puzzle. So we've got the number of entries is 260. So the the position of the position of of the median, the position of Q2 is going to be 260 divided by 2, which is 130. So we're looking for the 130th term, which is obviously in this group over here. Okay, so we're going to take what I'll do is I'll make a little sketch. I always like to make a sketch with linear interpolation of this particular, you know, oops, this particular interval. So we got between 30 and 45. Again, there's no gaps here. Q2, we've got to find what Q2 is. And Q2 is the 130th term. The beginning of this group, we are the 20th term. By the end of this group, we're the 145th term. So we got to estimate what Q2 is using limiter, linear interpolation. So it's going to be 30 plus. Now, what fraction of what fraction of this whole um, width? Okay, the fraction of this whole width um, is. Um, so this is 165 here. Sorry, not 145. That's 165 because you got 20, then another 145. So what fraction of this whole width, okay, is 130? So you're going to have, it's going to be um, 110 over 145. 110 over the 145 multiplied by the width of the top, which is from 30 to 45, which is 15. That's the fraction that this makes of the whole thing. They both make the same fraction with the whole width. So the, the in terms of the actual interval, Okay, Q2 is going to be, you could say, yeah, Q2 is going to be 30 plus this fraction of 145. So it's 30, we could just put that in our calculator. So you have 30 plus, 30 plus 110 over 145 multiplied by 15, which gives us, 41.379 okay which is 41.379 which is 41.4 so q2 is 41.4 seconds so that's the answer for part c using linear interpolation okay so that was a little bit of a mistake in the beginning that i mentioned here the beginning of the group is 20 by the end of the group you've got another 145 so that's 165 the width of the group is 145 in terms of the numbers of entries, and the width of the group is 15 in terms of the values of the terms. So, you know, this is one way of, of doing this. All right, you say Q2 is 30 plus 110 over 145 using proportion of times this width. Okay, so that's one way of, of doing this. Um, the, this, this question here. All right, so then it says, describe the skewness of the data, give a reason for your answer. All right, so now we can see from the first question that the mean was, the mean was 42.6. Okay, so the mean is 42.6 and the median is 41.4 seconds. So we can see that the mean is greater than the median. So I'll just write it like this. The mean is greater than the median okay now if you think about your distribution when you have your distribution and it's skewed okay then you've got your bars now that the bars that are highest are like the median and the mode and the mean is normally lower than it if it's if it's skewed data all right so the when the mean is uh, greater than the median then it looks like this okay it looks something like this which has a positive skew because this tail points towards the right. So whenever the mean is greater than the median, you're going to have positive skew. Positive skew. Okay. The median is always higher up than the mean in terms of the height of the bars, you could say. All right. When it's skewed data. When it's normal distribution, when it's like, uh, you know, symmetrical data, the mean, the mode, and the median are always the same. Okay. But when you have skewed data, the median is greater than the mean when it's positive skew and the median is less than the mean when it's negative skew. Okay, so here we have positive skew. 
Then it says three of the 260 people are chosen at random. Estimate the probability that all three of their times are less than 36 seconds. So let's have a look. We've got this 65 and 15, although I don't think we actually need that. All right. So now um, let's have a look. Yeah, one second. Okay, so now what we have to do is estimate the number of people that took less than 36 seconds. Now, this is between 15 and 30 seconds. This is between 30 and 45 seconds. So we got to do a similar kind of thing, this linear interp um, interpolation type of method, to work out the number of people less than 36. So this is 30, and this is 45. And you have... Um, that's the number of seconds. We've got to find the number of people who took less than 36 seconds. All right. So we've got here um, 20, and that's 165. And we've got to find out what this number is. Okay. So this is the number of people. That's what we've got to find. Let me call it X. All right. So that's the number of people who took 36 seconds, basically. All right. So what we can do here is um, we can basically work out what this is by doing linear interpolation that's 145 okay that's 6 that's 15 from 30 to 45 so we can say x is going to be equal to okay the number of people is going to be um the number of people is going to be 20 we're looking at the number of people down here now that's what we're looking at, we're looking at the times now x is in the number of people so you're going to have 20 plus and we have this fraction, which is 6 out of 15, that's a fraction, 6 out of 15, of the number of people in this category, that fraction of the people in this category, that's how far into this category we've got to go. So it's going to give you 20 plus 6 over 15 times 145. That will tell you the number of people, which is 78. So this is 78. So we can say that the number of people altogether, okay, that uh, took less than um, um, 36 seconds is 78 people, okay. So we can say there's 78 people that took less than 78, um, less than 36 seconds, all right. So we can say that um, the number that the number that the time was less than 36 seconds is. 78. So we've got to find the probability that the time was less than 36 seconds for all three of them. Okay, so the probability that the time is less than 36 for all three of them. All right, so there's three people chosen at random from these 260 people. So the first person to be chosen, okay, there's 78 people out of 260. Then you're going to choose a second person, but you've already chosen one person already who or whose time is less than 36 seconds. So that's going to be 77 people left out of 259. And then you're going to choose a third person out of those uh, out of that group of 260. Now you've already chosen two of them, and those two you chose were from that group whose times were less than 36. So you're going to have 76 people left out of 258. Okay, so that's the first pick, the second pick, the third pick, and that will give you the probability okay why is it an estimate because we have to do linear interpolation to estimate the number of people who took less than 36 seconds okay we did this linear interpolation to do that so now we got 78 over 260 multiplied by 77 over 259 multiplied by 76 over 258 and that gives us 209 over 7,955. 209 over 7,000, what was it? 955. So there's the answer to the question part E. Okay, so there's the answer to part E. So we had to do some linear interpolation to work out the numbers. You have 20 plus the fraction from this, okay, which, uh, who did, who took less than 36 seconds. How do we work that, work that out? We took the fraction. That, that 36 is of this 15, so it's 6 over 15 times that 145. That tells you how many people in that group you know, were between 30 and 36 seconds. Add it to that 20, that gives you the total number. Okay, so that's, that, that gave us 78 over here. So that's 78 people. And then 
We then work that out the probability for three people being picked from that group. Every time you pick another person, there's one less person out of that group and of the whole number that you're picking from, and you get your total probability for the three picks. All right, so that concludes this question, number two from the October 2019 Statistics S1 paper uh, from um, International A-Level at Excel. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this particular um, topic of histograms, I guess, and linear interpolation um, can be found in this uh, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.